Hello guys, welcome. Today I want to introduce you to FabNodes. FabNodes is a new Blender extension that I'm working on uh, and it's made for exporting G-code or toolpaths uh, to different machines, mainly machines that you use G-code for now. And I guess the easiest way to get started is you can go to the extensions platform on Blender then you can either uh, find it here in the get extensions fab nodes or the way we were you can just go into extension platform get add-on and then drag and drop into blender uh, you can also download it from github and install it the old school way on the add-ons tab here on your settings in blender now uh, in order to get started the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to delete the cube I'm gonna change this to geometry node editor. I'm gonna add a new window here on the side. I'm gonna add a spreadsheet. And I'm gonna add another one here on the side and I'm gonna change this one to a text editor so I can explain what we're doing. Now uh, I'm gonna add a new mesh. Very important, uh, for now this only works with meshes. It takes actually each vertex or each position and then it uses that to generate the g-code. So, well, we have this. Let me go into here. Let's go into the end panel. Into the fab notes tab that should appear there once you install the add-on. Uh, without doing anything here, I'm just going to use the default settings. I'm going to click export g-code. And you can see now in your text editor here, you can see that a new file was created called circle.gcode. So it's the name of the object that you're exporting and .gcode. Uh, and you can see that it generated some gcode for us. Now, the first thing I want to explain is the mode. Uh, each mode does something a little bit different. For example, the CNC is going to try to use an F and an S value. The 3D printer, if we export this, is going to try to use an F and an E value. Later on, I'll add uh, other parameters that can be useful. Uh, the drawing one, if we use it, for example, you can see that it uses the, the M3 um, G code to drive up and up and down. Right now, this is only moving it up and then moving it up again, so it's not drawing a lot, uh, at all. I'll explain that how that works in a minute. Uh, and the laser one. And the laser one usually is also looking for F and S. The F drives the speed and the S is going to drive the power of the laser. In the case of the CNC, the S, I guess, drives the speed of the spindle, but I think I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Anyways, um, for now, what I'm going to do is let's keep explaining. All right, sorry. So position settings, you get two options. The, you can use the position attribute, which every mesh by default is gonna have the position attribute. You can see it here. And you can see it's in the current uh, scene units. So if you click export, all you're doing is taking this, this position attribute, parsing it into the G code that goes in between the start and the end G code. And then you can save this file. Uh, or to save a file, you can go to text, save as, and then just pick a folder and save your file. Um, anyways, you can also use the global position. In this case, it's going to look exactly the same. But for example, if you have your object here in the positive quadrant, if I had it in the position attribute and export it, you're going to see it's the same uh, uh, position we're using. So it's the same uh, G code. And that's because this is relative to the object's origin. So it's one in Y from the object's origin. Now, if I change this to global and I export it, now it's going to actually use the global position of each one of those. Uh, vertices. Depending on what you're doing, this can be useful or not. Uh, if you're doing a lot with the position attribute in geometry nodes, maybe you want to keep that and explore that. Maybe. I guess it just depends how you set up your, your scene. Uh, and also the scale. Why am I exporting to a thousand? Well, uh, I understand that you can change the settings in Blender. 
you can change the um, units. Where are the units? I always forget. Here you go. You can change all these. But as you can see, usually Blender by default comes in meters, and most of the settings are in meters. So I'm trying to avoid that every time you start something, you have to go and set up some kind of setting for that, and you can just start working. So the idea here is that it's in meters, you want to export to millimeters, so you multiply by a thousand. If you want to export, for example, to inches, you can multiply by uh, uh, 2,400 uh, something. It depends, uh, 2.5 or something, I guess. I forgot the conversion rate, but you get the idea. Um, Anyways, that's why the scale is there for. And then you can also use the global value or the attribute value. The global value means that you can set a static number here and export it. But the real reason for the existence of this add-on is that it's kind of tailored to, to use geometry nodes. There are other alternatives that, that you can export G-code from Blender, like Blender Cam. I think they're changing the name and uh, G-Code Exporter, Nozzle Boss. Actually, I took a lot of inspiration from G-Code Exporter to, to make this add-on. Uh, and they work really good. And the only reason I, I changed it is because I wanted to tailor the experience to using attributes. Um, now, um, again, to do that, now you can select these checkboxes, create a new geometry node modifier in your mesh and now if I do store named attribute for example change the speed in this case you have to use these exact words you can change that to 100 and you can see that it updates that speed for us uh, now right now we're just doing the same because we're just applying these to everything but when it this becomes interesting is that we can change, for example, we can dynamically change the speed to go faster based on its position. I mean, you might want to do that or something like that for the power or for another parameter. So let's grab a position, separate, vector. Now I'm going to take my C value. I'm going to map range. So Let's do it based on the Y value. And right now what we're trying to map is our positions go from one here to minus one here. Or oh, sorry, I'm using the Y value. Minus one here and one here, right? Because remember, this is relative to our origin that is here. So what I'm going to do is from minus one to one, I want to go maybe the minimum speed can be a hundred and the maximum speed maybe a thousand. And export G code. Oh, I didn't connect it. Result value. I connected here. So now my my you can see my speed attribute changes for each point. And you can see now we get it. Uh, we get it here. Uh, so again, this can be useful, for example, if you want to change the power of a laser, if you want to change uh, how long it stays, because maybe the ink absorbs a little bit more with some kind of pen. I don't know. The idea is that to leave this very open-ended so that you can decide and you can have a lot of control on how you're using your attributes. Now, uh, maybe the only one that needs further explanation is the draw one. So if you're drawing, you actually need to use the draw attribute. And very important, you have to change that to a Boolean value. And what that's going to do, if we go back here to drawing and then we export it, what it's going to do is that it's going to allow you to do this. It's going to start the, the G code and it's going to go pen down and pen up. Uh, right now we're only going up and down once. so. So it's doing it for all of these, but every time it sees a change on the on the value of the on the Boolean value, it's gonna actually change. Um, it's gonna actually add it. So let me make a quick example. So let's say I wanna draw two of these. So let me see, join geometry, and maybe what I'm gonna do is let me do this. 
false. So now I have, I have two circles, right? I have the first circle here that is going to have pen down true and the second one that is going to be false. So you can see we go pen down, we do the first circle, pen up, we do the second circle. Um, right now it's using uh, some values for my uh, pen plotter, 250 and 0. I'll make this easy to change as a setting here, but for now these are the values. That's on the to do list, so maybe when you see this, it's already implemented. Anyways, the main idea is that, and a lot of the other parameters and the other attributes are going to work in a similar manner. For example, if you want to turn a fan on and off, um, you can do it like that. It's things that you can uh, toggle, like the speed of a router, thing, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go in depth, I'm going to actually make a tutorial uh, for each of one of each of these different machines to show more the application of this. Um, and one last thing to explain uh, before we finish the video is a custom start MG code. I think you're gonna wanna use this about 90% of the time because most likely your machine is different than the ones that I set up here. So in order to do that, you create two files. Start, you can name, name them whatever you want. Start G code. Then I'm gonna create an end file and I'm just going to put ng code. So I'm going to select my start file and my end file. Again, that's why it doesn't matter what name you use as long as you select the start file and the end file that you want. Export g code. And then if I go to my g code file here, you will see that it replaces all that with just the content of those text files. And the best way to get these for your machine is to go to the slicer that you're using. And most of the times in the parameters, in the settings, you can find the custom start, custom end or something, and you can copy paste that. You can also export a file on your slicer and then just copy the first, um, the initial part and the end part. Now, I suggest you're very careful mo and mostly when you're dealing with uh, temperatures and things like that, because you want to make sure you know what you're doing. That's just that's just my advice. <laughs> Double check and make sure that you know what you're doing before you start trying anything with this. Uh, anyways, one last thing is you get some help things here. Later on, this will be linked to a documentation. But for now, this is just like a quick explanation of what I just said in the video. Anyways, thank you. I hope this is useful and please let me know uh, any functionality you would like to, to see or you would like to use and I'll be happy to try to accommodate for that. Have a nice day.